Hey fellow knitters, um, welcome to my tutorial on the mattress stitch. This is actually uh, part two in a two-part series on how to join your or how to seam your piecework seamlessly. Um, in part one I show you how to join two pieces of work um, salvage edge to salvage edge which is what you see right here. It's a salvage edge to salvage edge and so as you can see an invisible seam uh, if you turn it over on the back, you can see where they've been joined. And in the second part, I'm going to show you how to join a uh, cast-on edge to a bind-off edge. So up here, um, where my thumb is, this is this bottom piece right here would be the cast-on edge, and then this piece right here that I'm joining it to is the bind-off edge. So again, the whole purpose for this is to actually create a seamless um, joint to your to your work so that it's an invisible seam so that it, it appears as one long continuous piece. For this you will need a uh, tapestry needle um, or a sewing needle. Uh, you can you also need um, a piece of yarn. <coughs> as you can see the piece of yarn that I'm using is black just like in the part one video. Um, it doesn't matter what color that you use because when you end up drawing um, the yarn and the, the two sides together real tight um, it disappears and it becomes invisible. So, so the first thing you want to do is you want to determine, or you want to take a look at and, and understand what you're looking at. So here you've got your salvage edge here. This is your, your first edge, which is kind of uh, funky looking. Um, and if you kind of pull it apart, you can see the rows of knitting. And of course, you, you see that these are short rows. Um, that these right here are wraps. So there's a wrap, there's a wrap, and there's a wrap. This is the, the Lizard Ridge Afghan. So the purpose is you've got these rows coming down, and the rows look like uh, tiny V's, like this. And you want those to go continuously into the rows here. So as you can see, and if you, of course here's your salvage edge, uh, you want to, to make these line up with the, the rows. So this first one, uh, right here, which is in between the salvage edge, which is this right here. So there's a row of V's, and there's a row of V's, and actually you can kind of see them better on the, the blue, I'll show it to you on the blue. So you've got your rows of V's that come down this way. So the purpose is, is you want the rows of V's in this top piece to line up perfectly with the rows of V's in your bottom piece. And again, that's what gives it the uh, continuous, the long continuous pattern. You can even pretend, if you look at the color change, you can pretend that this one and this one here, this this uh, black or you know charcoal gray and this, this blue, that they were two separate pieces, that they were joined seamlessly. So as you can see, how it just continuously goes down into, so that's that's what we're going to actually create by using the mattress stitch. All right, so, the first thing I do is, because I don't have a tail to work with, is I kind of create um, an end here. Because normally when you do this, you take the tail end of one piece, and then you just um, cut it really long, and then you just continuously work that to join the two pieces. But I don't have um, a tail to work with, so I'm just going to create one like this. And then, of course, I leave a piece... Um, I leave about oh, seven to eight inches because I'm going to weave this in when I'm done uh, attaching this top row uh, to the bottom row. So again, the first thing you want to do is you want to look for the bottom most V. Now this right here, because it's the cast on, I don't use this cast on here. I actually start with the first one that's directly above it, which you can see. So it's actually this purple right here. So that would be the one V leg that we're bringing into the bottom piece. Of course, in the beginning, it's kind of, you know, you, you, you want to have your yarn long enough uh, to be able to cover your the width of your work that you're doing. 
All right, and then what you want to do is down here, you want to come into the V's that are pointing upward. So the V's that look like, kind of hard to show you, but like this, those are what you want to thread the needle underneath. And that's, by doing it that way, that's what will give you that effect. So these right here are coming or pointing upwards. You can see how these, so those are the ones that you want to work with, and that's what will create that effect that you are weaving it into, or not weaving it, but uh, bringing it into perfectly the row below it, or the columns, we should call them columns, not rows. And then you kind of leave it loose. You don't really want to draw it tight. And then you come back up to the top and then you go into the second set of these. Just right there. And then you come down, and then you go into the next set of V's that are pointing upwards. Like that. And as you look at this, because it's kind of loose, but what you're creating, because we've been talking about V's, is you're actually creating a row of V's that are pointing downward. And that's what's giving it that effect of continuing down into the row below it. So again, there's the V at the top. And then you're going to go into the upside down V in the bottom. So here's the row of upside down V's. And then you go into the topmost one. Like that. So I usually do about three, um, no more than four V's before pulling it tight. Now before pulling it tight, because it can make it hard to, to find the next one, is I kind of reserve the next V that I'm going to go into like that. And then, of course, for this first one, you want to hold your, your tail. And then you just pull it together like that. And then continue on. And your next set of upside down V's on the bottom. Next set of V's on the top. The upside down these on the bottom. Then I reserve the, the space up here that I'm going to go into for my next one before pulling it tight. And I always hold just to the right of it. And 
There you have it. So as you can see, so here's a row here. It's coming down, going right into this row here. Or column, I should say, not row, but column. And of course, no seam, invisible. And then if you turn it over, you'll see how they're brought together, you know, kind of like that. So that is how you do the mattress stitch when joining a cast on edge to a bind off edge. And of course this can be done for cast off edge to cast off edge, bind off edge to bind off edge, or bind off edge to cast on edge. Uh, so there's four different ways that you can do it, but this way that I'm showing you is actually the top piece is the cast on edge and the bottom piece or the, the main piece that I'm joining onto is the bind off edge. So thank you for watching my video. Please be sure and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day.